need of strength, in need of peace, in need of things that only you can give to me, in need of Christ, the perfect Lamb, my refuge strong, the great I am. This is my song, my humble plea, I am your child, I am in need, in need of grace, in need of love, in need song, my humble plea, I am your child, I am in need, in need of Christ, the perfect Welcome to worship this day. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. I'm Pastor Stephanie Kirshner from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Manchester, Connecticut. Welcome to worship. Let us prepare our hearts and minds. Good morning. Happy New Year. Uh, a few announcements this morning. First, I'd like to welcome any visitors that may be worshiping with us um, this morning. Um, I'd like to give you a full-throated welcome to the Emmanuel community. Uh, if you'd like to participate more fully, um, one of the things you might do is send an email to our office to um, Ann Heinrich. Her email is aheinrich at emmanuelmanchester.org. It's aheinrich at emmanuelmanchester.org. Uh, if you let her know that you're interested in receiving our Friday updates or the Zoom links to our coffee hours, she'll add you to the mailing list so that you can join us for those um, events. So Zoom coffee hour every uh, Sunday, 1030 a.m. And um, the links for that are sent out uh, a few days prior. So watch for those in your email address. Uh, congregational survey, long awaited. Uh, the council will be sending out a congregational survey. In fact, you may have already received it in your inbox. Um, this is uh, a way to seek your input and better understand how you feel about uh, a manual going forward and reopening and COVID restrictions and so forth. Um, but there's an important um, piece that you need to know. The survey, in order for it to be completed fully, there are two separate links that you have to go to. Each link is limited to 10 questions. So um, make sure you 
links, take both links and fully answer all the questions so that we can get all of your uh, input. The annual meeting, Sunday, January 24th. Please mark your calendar. Information will be sent out shortly along again with a Zoom link to the meeting. You'll get the annual reports and the proposed budget and all of the other information that you um, typically expect to receive for our annual meeting. Uh, pledge cards for 2021. Although our campaign, our formal campaign has been completed for some time now, uh, it's really not too late. If you're in a position to be able to make uh, some type of a commitment uh, in a formal way to the church and you'd like to make that known, um, there's a way for you to uh, get a pledge card. Uh, you can also uh, send an email, a confidential email. You could send that to Nancy Witten at the church office. And her email address is nwitten uh, at emmanuelmanchester.org. So the more the merrier. We'd love to have you. Uh, last but not least, um, over the last few months and more recently several weeks, we've come to know that uh, there are several members of Emmanuel that have been not only exposed uh, to the coronavirus, but there are members among us that actually have contracted the virus. So uh, I think it's important that uh, they all know and we all know that our thoughts and prayers are with those folks as they um, wrestle with the disease and work um, towards healing. So uh, blessings on your day, folks. Uh, have a great worship experience. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the love of God born in flesh, and the communion of the Holy Spirit that descended like a dove at the baptism of the Messiah be with you all. Amen. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures, proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your spirit, bless all of your children, that we may be upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ that we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, holy God, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, now and forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with our, all our prayers. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. 
In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While the wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned like above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as a king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, after me, the one who is more powerful than I is coming, 
the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but the one who is coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the Lutheran Church and in many mainline Protestant traditions, the first Sunday after the festival of the Epiphany is the day we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. On this day, we read and hear the account of Jesus' baptism from one of the Gospels. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the story is told in narrative, each one sharing a similar story. Each one setting the scene with tons of eyewitnesses on the shores of the Jordan, listening to John the baptizer preach the message of repentance and holy washing. Hearing him bear witness to the one who will come after him, watching as Jesus approaches John, asks to be baptized, John hesitating in some way, insisting that he is not worthy. The gospel accounts vary on specifics of the actual baptism. Does everyone see the Holy Spirit descending? Does everyone hear God's booming voice declaring that this is God's beloved son or only Jesus or John and Jesus? Each baptismal gospel narrative may be slightly different, but they're each the same too. Our own personal baptismal narratives differ, too. When we study Jesus' baptism and confirmation class, I ask the students to have their parents tell them the story of their own baptism, if they were baptized as an infant or if they were young enough to not remember it. When were they baptized? Who was there? Did they wear some sort of special baptismal gown? Did they cry when the water was poured over their head? And then I have them ask why. Why were they baptized? Why were they brought to the font? Why did their parents and godparents and sponsors make promises to them and to God? Maybe you could pause this sermon right now and think on those questions yourself. Or you could ask your own parent or answer these questions for your child or your children. Or perhaps look at pictures of your baptism or baptism of family members, recalling that day. My mother has told me the story of my own baptism many times. But more important than the narrative was always her explanation of why I was baptized. She will tell you, as she has told me, that she and my father brought me to the font with thankful, hopeful, plea-filled prayers in their hearts that this child, their daughter, me, was loved from the moment that I was conceived, that the waters that were sprinkled on my head, the cross that was signed on my own forehead would always draw me nearer to God, to God's work in my life, and to God's people, that I would know that I was beloved and that I would know that I had been claimed as God's child and called as Christ's disciple. That the Holy Spirit would grant me the courage and the strength to then live into that call for all of my life. What about you? Is your narrative similar? Or perhaps the narrative of when you brought your own child to the waters. The story of our own sacrament of baptism all of those stories are probably somewhat similar. There's water. There's God's holy word. There's the promise of the Holy Spirit. There's God's claim on us as a beloved child of God. There's a covenant. There is a joining to Christ in Christ's baptism. And all of this is a subversive claim. We acknowledge 
that we are choosing to join with, to live by a narrative that denies the world story, the world story that is of success at all costs and wealth as a goal and individual, individualism as a virtue and power and power and power. In baptism, we claim we live by dying to the world and living to Christ. In baptism, we acknowledge our Lord is a man who was killed as a criminal by the state and was raised from the dead by the God who will not be confined to the grave. As the great preacher, theologian, and seminary professor Walter Brueggemann writes, the entry point into the counterscript is baptism, whereby we say in the old liturgies, do you renounce the dominant script? Do you remember that part of the baptismal liturgy? Maybe not from your own baptism, but perhaps from your confirmation when you affirmed your faith. Or maybe when you witnessed someone else's baptism. Maybe when you were part of the assembly. So maybe you can recollect the profession of faith. When the pastor asks all the assembled these words, these words that can be found right here in our own ELW, the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Book, in the baptismal liturgy. These questions are asked. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. And these questions are asked not just to the family being who is bringing someone to be baptized, not just to the baptized person themselves, but to the entire assembly, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? And our response to all of those, our response is I renounce them. I renounce them, I renounce them. Every time we stand and witness to God's baptismal promises, every time we affirm our baptism, every time we trace the sign of the cross on our own foreheads and remember our own baptism every single day, we are professing as God's beloved children and Christ's called disciples, we are professing that we renounce evil. Each year on January 6th, the Christian church around the world celebrates the Feast of Epiphany, a festival day in which we celebrate a group of traveling wise men who refuse to do the will of Herod, an evil, bloodthirsty, tyrant king who is grasping at straws, trying to hold power indefinitely. On Epiphany this year, in our own country, we watched in horror as plotted acts of evil and terror played out and were incited and encouraged with horrific rhetoric in our nation's capital. You may be wondering why I'm filming this sermon at home instead of in the sanctuary of Emmanuel. Well, we had scheduled our recording for Thursday this week. And the sermon that I intended to preach is not this sermon. I had to trash that sermon. I had to throw it out because of the atrocities that have occurred this week. And then I had to pray a lot. I had to sit with God's word. I had to listen to the Holy Spirit. And that took some time. The Church of Christ, baptized members of the body of Christ, especially white Mainstream Protestant congregations have for far too long failed to profess that we renounce the types of evil that were and are on full display in this country. And we have to ask ourselves, each other, our church bodies, why? Is it fear? Are we afraid to offend someone? Are we afraid to ruin a relationship? Are we afraid of losing members? Are we afraid of preaching the gospel? Or do we think that it's not our problem? It's not our problem because we're white or we're middle class or we're straight or we're fill in the blank. 
Well, siblings in Christ, that time is over. Remember our baptism narrative. Our baptism promises are linked to Jesus. We have received the same Holy Spirit as the man who went to the margins of society to be with the sinner and the outcast and the poor and the marginalized. The same Holy Spirit as the man who flipped tables and made a whip to drive out those in the temple who were oppressing the poor and desecrating a place of worship. The same Holy Spirit as the man who spoke out against the atrocities and evils of the empire, even to the point of death. We have received that Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that empowers us to keep those baptismal promises we spoke for our children and our grandchildren and our godchildren and the children of our church. The baptismal promises we spoke for each other, beloved children of God. Those responsibilities we have been entrusted with. To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So are you ready? Are you ready to renounce evil? Are you ready to renounce the evil of anti-Semitism, like what we saw on full display on Wednesday? Men wearing sweatshirts that said Camp Auschwitz on the front and staff on the back. Or the t-shirts that read 6MWE, meaning 6 million wasn't enough. 6 million Jews being killed wasn't enough. Are you ready to renounce the evil of racism that has plagued this country since its inception? The evil of racism that flew a Confederate flag, a symbol of slavery and terror and hatred and white supremacy in the halls of the Capitol building. The evil of racism exhibited when violent mobs of mostly white people were not met with heavily armed National Guardsmen on the steps of the Capitol, like over the summer when people marched in the streets in response to the continued killings of unarmed black men, women, and children. And those same peaceful summer protesters being gassed for a photo op with an upside down held Bible in front of a church the photograph subject had never even stepped into. Are you ready to renounce the evil of fascism, like that which was spouted by famed America's mayor Rudy Giuliani, who got up on a stage mere hours before the terrorist attack and said, and I quote, over the next 10 days, we get to see the machines that are crooked, the ballots that are fraudulent, and if we're wrong, we will be made fools of. But if we're right, and a lot of them will go to jail. So let's have trial by combat. Are you ready to renounce evil? Because it is our call to do that, dear siblings. It is part of the baptismal promise we have made with our God to hold fast to that which is good, but to renounce all evil things that pollute the faith. So I offer us this prayer. May the Holy Spirit empower us and embolden us. May it teach us to recognize evil when it happens. May it help us to name it in all of its forms. May it help us be brave enough to renounce it whenever and wherever we see it. May the Holy Spirit help our declamations to be loud. May it open our eyes and guide our tongues so that we may proclaim Christ through word and deed, cared for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Amen.
On this Sunday of the baptism of our Lord, let us offer our prayers for all in need, responding to each petition with words from today's psalm. Give us your blessings of peace. For the worldwide church, for those who minister in the church, for all who will be baptized this year, and for their godparents and sponsors, that the Holy Spirit will empower all the faithful for lives of service, let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For the waters of the earth, for the seas, the lakes, the rivers, for the wells that provide drinking water, and for the water that is piped into our homes, that God provide clean and nourishing water for all living things, let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for international efforts to prevent war and reduce violence, for the armed forces, for police officers, and for peacemakers, that God inspire all people to work for the harmonious well-being of others, let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For students, for teachers and school administrators, for parents assisting their children in homeschooling, and for young people who are finding a way toward graduation. That as the academic year resumes, God give resilience to everyone in the search for education. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For we who are in need, our spirits are weighed down with fear, 
our bodies feel as fragile as the dust from which we came. All that we have trusted seems hidden from sight. O merciful God, as your disciples, we do not trust in our own power or strength, but in your steadfast love in every generation. Show us your face in this time of trial we are experiencing as a nation. Remind us of your faithfulness. O oh God, give strength to our people. Give us your blessings of peace. For all who are in trouble, want, or sickness. For the countless who are suffering with COVID-19. For medical workers. For people who are hungry or homeless, imprisoned or lonely. And for those we name at this time. that God grant health and wholeness to a world so filled with pain. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For ourselves, that we rejoice in our adoption as members of God's family, and that now in this silence, we bring to God our heart's requests. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. In gratitude for our beloved dead, especially we offer our praise for all the baptized who have accompanied us and supported us and taught us throughout our days, that at our end we join with them in everlasting joy. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. Almighty and most merciful God, you are the mighty voice from heaven. You are our beloved savior. You are the descending dove. We give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies. And we ask you to accept our prayers for the sake of your mercy today and forever. Amen. temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory
Beginning with Beloved, a blessing by Jan Richardson. From Mark's Gospel. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. Begin here, beloved. Is there any other word need saying any other blessing could compare with this name, this knowing. Beloved comes like a mercy to the ear that has never heard it. Comes like a river to the body that has never seen such grace. Beloved comes holy to the heart aching to be new. Comes healing to the soul wanting to begin again. Beloved, keep saying it. And though it may sound strange at first, watch how it becomes part of you, how it becomes you, as if you never could have known yourself anything else, as if you could ever have been other than this. Beloved. Beloved. 